We're gonna call the workshop meeting to order. City managers report on issues raised at prior meeting. Special event applications. There's five applications. The Asbury Park Women's Day <coughs> Day, City Day, Fifth Annual St. Patrick's Day Parade, um, the Coast to Coast Ride, Arts Craft Bazaar, and then five wedding, wedding dates. Is there any questions on these? No. Okay, thank you. Review of agendas of this evening's meeting. Agenda items. Uh, uh, resolution 2018-69 is approving the special event application. Um, 70 and 71 is appointments to the um, Public Art and Sunset Lake Commission, respectively. Resolution 2018-72 is entering the Central Jersey Health Insurance Fund. I have a question. Yeah. Is, is this effective immediately, or is this wait, wait until the end of the year? The GIF? The HIF? It's immediately. Okay. Um, 73, 74, and 75 is refund of tax and sewer overpayments. Um, moving on to the individual re resolutions. Resolution 2018-76 is a temporary budget appropriation. Resolution 2018-77 is a payment of bill. Resolution 2018-78 is entering for a memorandum of standing, uh, understanding for lead services. Um, this is a free service that will be referring um, applicants to um, a nonprofit, which we'll discuss in greater detail if you want, but it's, it's a free service that the um, Community Resource Center is going to be providing for us. Um, resolution 2018-79 is the menu item, which was discussed last meeting. Um, resolution 2018-80 is the boardwalk replacement. Um, project contract. Resolution 81 is amending the contract for LSRP services at the Department of Public Works garage. If you remember, this has been going on for about two years. Uh, we've had favorable results. This is for the third and third and what should be the final phase of everything keeps going on of this contract. Um, resolution 82 is allowing the contracting agent, which is made to privately sell surplus property. Uh, the current meter company wants one of our old meters so that under the local public contracts law they can have one at a price that we establish using the price that was paid for and this depreciation of the useful life we figure it's worth about a grand so um, we'll get a credit for a thousand dollars on a, the next meter purchases um, resolution 2018-83 is award of a contract is on administration and inspecting services for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, this is preliminary expenses authorized, authorized under the um, the bond law. These services will be released, will be reimbursed from the general fund, the, from the current fund to the sewer, sewer utility. Um, for introduction, there is um, uh, sewer improvements. This is for replacing the carbon filtration at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the current filtration system is at the end of its useful life. Its useful life is 10 years, um, so we need to replace it. I would like to make um, a change in 2018-7 from the appropriation of $325,000 um, to $375,000. We have a price for it that's probably gonna be at 350. Um, and since this is introduction, we can do that now and then supplemental and take more later. And then that concludes the resolutions. Is there any questions? Thank you. Move on to matters by city council. Nothing at this time. None at this time. Thank you. You want to go in? Uh, I don't have anything. Uh, I can think of, so go ahead. It's going to be a quick meeting. On Wednesday, February 28th, from 10.30 to 12.30 at the drugstore, home drugstore, 814 Main Street. There's going to be free screening, healthy snacks, samples, and nutrition activities. Uh, this is part of the Mayor's Wellness Committee. Uh, excellent event, sponsored by Easy Ride New Jersey Healthy Corner Store Initiative, the Fruit Trust New Jersey Partnership for Healthy Kids. 
and Hackensack Meridian Health. So uh, hopefully a lot of people will turn out and it's a wonderful free event where you can find out how healthy you are. That's all I have. Matters for the city manager? Uh, we have two issues tonight, uh, discussions. One is, we'll skip to the second one because Mr. Mandel is here um, for, to discuss a concession for um, electric vehicle charging stations. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Don't like him? I guess not. <laughs> Good evening, council members. <laughs> A little loud, huh? Um, I'm here tonight to talk about uh, electric vehicle car share, and this is just one component of the bigger transportation puzzle. Um, <clears throat> why are we talking about EV car share tonight? Well, <clears throat> there's two things that are going on. Electric vehicles are growing in demand, um, and there's sort of a lack of infrastructure, public infrastructure in New Jersey, to support that demand. Um, the governor, the new governor, has uh, you know, voiced his support to expand electric vehicle infrastructure and, and promotion of it for a number of reasons. Um, but the other piece is car share. And the idea behind car share is it's a lot like bike, bike share, which we have now, where um, there are basically publicly available cars that people can rent out for an hour at a time up to a full day <clears throat> to cover any you know, trips that they need to take that are maybe out of range of walking or, or bicycling. So EV car share is uh, something that's starting to catch on around the country. Um, in New Jersey, the first city to have it was Jersey City, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but basically, when it comes to the triple bottom line, which planners consider environment, economy, and equity, this really kind of hits all three pretty nicely. In terms of environment, um, we get cleaner air if we promote electric vehicles. Uh, and it helps improve our standing uh, for Sustainable Jersey, which we've already achieved bronze certification, and this would definitely help a long way to get us towards silver certification. In addition, from an economy, economic perspective, of course, uh, providing alternative modes of transportation um, help to reduce our parking demand, which in turn helps to reduce how much parking we need to create in the city, um, which could save us money in the long run uh, as this catches on. And it's just a more efficient mode of transportation. Plus, it's a it's a real attractive amenity for the city to have. Um, you know, the, the goal here is not to have everyone get rid of their cars, but at least to have you know have citizens have the residents have the option to not have a car if that's what they so desire. And the last piece, of course, is equity. And as we all know, that about a third of all uh, Asbury Park households are carless, zero car households. Uh, so the idea is to uh, improve accessibility for people to get to uh, doctor's appointments, grocery store trips, things like that, um, if they don't have a car. So next page, um, the shared economy is you know something that keeps growing. You're all familiar with you know the different methods that are out there, the different uh, companies that are out there like Uber, Lyft, Airbnb. Um, the idea is ownership is becoming less and less of a priority, especially among younger generations. Uh, they're, they're much more likely to share, share resources to, to get around, and cars are definitely one piece of that. So on the next page, um, this is from Greenspot, who's the company we met with, uh, the one vendor we talked to. Um, and 91% uh, of Americans believe the way we live produces too much waste, and ownership is, is kind of a thing in the past. And in particular, cars on average sit idle 95% of the day. So the idea is to try and uh, share that resource, that limited resource, as much as possible. So next page, um, the way the transportation industry is really moving is that in the future, a lot of uh, economists and transportation folks predict that cars will be more and more driverless, more shared, and electric. So this is kind of you know just getting our feet wet in that realm to know that 10, 20, 30 years from now, uh, this is kind of how everything is going to be moving. So 
uh, I sat down with a company called Green Spot, and they're the, the they're from Jersey City, and they're, they're the company that has launched the program in Jersey City. Um, and they are very interested in coming to Asbury Park on a pilot basis to see if this works and how successful it might be. On the next page, it's a little bit about what they've done so far in Jersey City. They launched in 20, 2014 with 10 car share vehicles. Um, in 2017, they grew to 28 vehicles. Um, and the, the city of Jersey City actually just released an RFP for more public uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure and to increase the number of car share vehicles. So what does that mean for Asbury Park? Um, we are looking to do a concession resolution, probably at the next council meeting, um, to then release an RFP to, to do electric vehicle car sharing. The idea for us was that it would be a phased program. We Initially, we might start out with just four parking spaces, four car spaces, in two different locations as a pilot uh, and assess how it's going and with the potential to expand up to eight spaces, what we're thinking for now. So we're thinking a smaller program than a city like Jersey City, uh, depending on what the demand is. And the vendor is going to perform a feasibility analysis for the installation locations, determine what is the best location, work with JCPNL to determine that. Um, they will purchase and install the level two chargers and then operate the car share program. Um, Depending on the number of stations that we uh, put forward in the RFP and that are deemed successful, they will allow public cars to charge at those stations. So for example, if we get to a point where we have eight parking spaces for, for electric vehicles, they, would, they said, okay, we'll take away, we'll use six for the car share and the other two spaces will be open for anyone to, to charge, basically. Um, they also will pay for the electricity for the, for the charging. And once they recoup the cost of the installation for the charging stations, they will uh, engage in a profit sharing um, agreement with the city. Um, so when it comes to potential locations, I think what we're, we're thinking about, and, and this is uh, open to the council's uh, input as well, is having two parking spaces, so one location in the CBD, and potentially one uh, on Springwood Avenue to start with. Um, None in the waterfront? Uh, that's something we can talk about. I think, I think we want to really locate the car share where there is a higher density of residents right now. So We're I think, at on Springwood. What's that? We're at. Uh, so that's the, the next page after CBD. There's a little map of Springwood. I just put some suggested locations based on where the developments are coming in um, to have some you know access to some of the higher density stuff that's coming on along Springwood. Okay. Um, the waterfront, another opportunity that Greenspot is willing to, to work with us with and I think is a good idea is to talk to a lot of the private developers and see if in their buildings they can start to incorporate you know two to four electric vehicle parking stations so that way and potentially even car share so that way their residents could use car share right in their building and if they have electric vehicles charge vehicles so um, so in the CBD you know we're looking at potentially two spaces in the Memorial Drive lot or two spaces at City Hall lot or potentially somewhere in the CBD where there's currently metered parking that maybe isn't as highly utilized as you know obviously wouldn't be on Cookman right but um, if there's some other areas that's maybe a little less utilized that we can get away with having two car share locations there. Because the idea is, you know, people aren't going to want to walk too far to get to a car to use it, right? So if we could have it somewhere in the CBD where the density is higher, that's the idea. So I put some potential locations for Springwood and then um, over uh, on Heck by the, the new Monroe building, South Grand and Wesley Grove, and then of course at the waterfront near the hotels and, and convention center. Um, and like I said, you know, we're planning to start with probably four as a pilot to see how it goes, see what the, the usage is, and then potentially expand up to eight maybe as soon as the end of this year. So um, that's kind of what we're envisioning.
<coughs> yeah, I think, you know, assuming the council agrees and we, we get the resolution passed the next ca uh, council meeting, we've got to go out to RFP. That'll take about a month and a half. By the time it gets installed, I mean, we're hoping, you know, sometime by the summer they could be ready, the first four. I love it, Michael. I think it's a great idea. Cool. Okay, thanks. The first one on the Jersey Shore. First one on the Jersey Shore. Absolutely. For, sure. for bike share and this. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Darn, we're good. Good job, Mike. Let's do it. Let's do your thing. We're gonna do. We're gonna mix things up a little bit and do a proclamation um, with the Esbury Park <laughs> High School debate team, and then we're gonna circle back to um, Michael, whatever Michael had. Who, whoever's next on the agenda. Right. So maybe we could all be Absolutely. So APTV interviewed the um, Asbury Park High School debate team because they again rocked 2017. Um, and we put uh, some, some stuff together. And the city wants to present a proclamation. You guys stand up here. So the city of Esbury Park is so proud of the Esbury Park High School debate team. We wanted to give you a proclamation because of all you did in 2017. And we thought, um, since you are great debaters, you're going to be great proclamation readers. So we're going to have you read the proclamation. And then um, maybe have your coach just say a couple of words. Can you hold the, you hold the mic and the proclamation? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anna Murphy, Esbury Park's captain. Um, City of Asbury Park, New Jersey, proclamation, whereas the 2017 Asbury Park High School debate team consists of 18 students in grades 9 through 12, the advisor Christine DeMarsco, their coach Dr. Joseph Patton, and the students mentors of Monmouth University, and whereas the debate team has continued to excel since their first debate in the New York City Urban Debate League in 2015, they were placed second on place, and whereas the students of the debate team play second in their division again in October 2017, and whereas five teams of two students who were required to compete in the three rounds who lasted two hours each and included Miana Murphy and Ison Griffin, um, Varsity Division, Griffith, <laughs> Varsity Division, Anaya Preston and Chris Lee um, Laverin, Kaylee Br um, Bird, Tatiana um, Lavrov, Carly Her Herrera, Daisy Vasquez, Melissa Garcia, and Tai Stern, and whereas five APHS debaters took top ten speaking award, including Chris Lee, Laverin, Naya Preston, um, Daisy Vasquez, Tatiana Leroux, um, Kaylee Bride, and whereas, again, <laughs> the 2017 consisting of Mayana Murphy, Majestus Murphy, Ison Griffith, Laria Childress, Naya Preston, Kaylee Bride, Maria um, Marcellus, Garland Henry, Kaplan and Nelson, Melissa Garcia, Oswaldo Paliz, uh, Tatiana um, Laro, Daisy Vasquez, Carly Herrera, Chris Lee Laverin, um, Thais Duran, Brianna Dunkley, and Lucero, um, who was, I think I said that right, hopefully, won five team awards and individual speaking awards in December 2017. And whereas during the debate of um, December, Miana Murphy and Daisy Vasquez won a team award. award Thank you. <laughs> Anaya Preston won an individual speaker award in the novice division. Lucero um, Ruiz and Oswaldo Pulis won individual speaking awards in the beginning division. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Asbury Park do hereby recognize, acknowledge, and congratulate the Asbury Park High School 2017 debate team and salute these individuals, the coach, advisor, and mentors for the job well done. Yay! <laughs> And she had no practice reading that proclamation, and you rocked it. You did a fantastic job. All right, we're going to bring the meeting back to order, please. We'll continue on with the matters from city manager. Wow. You are loud. I got them quiet. <laughs> It has. What did you say, Louise? Good. 
Join the crowd. Matters for the city manager? So the last item is something that's a continuation from the previous meeting is um, designating smoking beaches or areas. Um, upon continued reviewing of the, the law, there's also um, <laughs> but oh, thank you. that smoke, secondhand smoke cannot go into commercial establishments, um, which obviously then restricts smoking on the boardwalk. Um, Gas reached out to us and provided us that, that documentation, and I reviewed the, the state statute on that. Um, there again is no decision determination has to be made tonight, um, but we're, you know, staff is recommending no smoking on the beaches. Um, we know that there's been some discussion from the public of allowing certain beaches to be smoking. Um, I would recommend that the council set up some sort of committee between two of you to discuss this to try to make up a recommendation to the governing body within the next month or so um, if it is something that is discussed and contested. Um, but as I said last time, I hate smoking, so we don't have to be really involved in this. So that's my recommendation is, is to you to reach out to me and we'll try to figure out something to recommend to the whole council. Go, go back to what you said. You said there's no smoker on the boardwalk now? That the, the law as it reads is that smoke can't go into commercial establishments. Uh, so there has to be a buffer zone. Well, then why the heck would we be buying $2,000 worth of butt collectors for the boardwalk? Under, if you're going to ban it from the boardwalk, why would you be buying that of menu money? That's something that we're going to address. The menu money authorizes it, but we're, I'm telling Garrett, don't buy it again until there's something concrete. When did this new law go into effect? It's been there for a while. Um, Gas brought it to my attention. Fred has only reviewed what was in the email to them. I reviewed the whole thing. I'm sorry, who brought it to your attention? Gas, yes. I don't remember what the inaccurate is. I've worked with them the for But if yeah. you have a, a cigarette on the boardwalk, it's not like you're standing at like ghost and blowing it in, right? You're just They're supposed to be having a, The boardwalk is 60 mean? feet wide. I, I don't even get that. Like, so if I have a, and I don't smoke, but if I have a cigarette and I lean against the rails on the boardwalk, I'm clearly not throwing I'm blowing it into fine. commercial establishments. If, right. if you're standing, Who's standing in, around yeah. blowing smoke into commercial establishments? So that's what the law is. We'll provide you a copy of the documentation. Okay. Matters by the city attorney. Nothing at this time. All right, we'll adjourn until 7 p.m. Oh. I want to call the regular meeting to order. Councilmember Chapman, Councilmember Clayton, here. Councilmember Kendall, here. Deputy Mayor Quinn, here. Mayor Moore, here. please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute, a pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 4, 2018, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Um, we did prior the proclamation recognizing the Asbury Park High School 2017 debate team, and I believe Deputy Mayor wanted to make an announcement. Oh, no, I'm good. Sorry, I'm good. Oh, you're good? I'm good. Okay, she didn't want to make an announcement. <laughs> this time, can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please? Move it. Second. Each person who wishes to speak, please come up to the mic, state your name and address for the record. Each member of the public has three minutes to speak. Good evening, Pam Lamberton. I just had a question about individual resolution uh, 2018-79 and wondered if you could explain that in excruciating detail. Yeah, the menu items, Michael. Oh, they're listed. Aren't they listed? So every, every year, part of the redevelopment 
deal was with Madison Marquette, Madison Marquette gives the city a hundred thousand dollars. But it has to be used for really specific purposes along the boardwalk and the beach. So we pick and choose year to year, and so these were the items that we were choosing for this year. This is this is the affordable housing set aside. Then no, this is, this is a hundred separate uh, separate <coughs> line item, separate agreement altogether. I'm sorry, those but the items for this year's menu are listed. I didn't see that they're on the elsewhere on the. They're on the resolution. Okay, I have them. Here. Can I have them? When we when we get there, we'll read them. Yeah. Okay, so you can read them. Cindy can read them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Hi, Rita Miranda, Wade Avenue. Uh, I have a few things. Number one, uh, has anybody discussed the zoning yet? Uh, I think the ordinance for zoning should be looked at. It's about 20 years old. I said this three weeks ago. I was wondering if anybody paid attention. That's number one. Number two, all the illegal parking on 8th Avenue is unbelievable. The yellow zone is constantly filled. That's number two. Number three, uh, 1706 Grand Avenue. Looks real nice, has flowers on it. I have pictures for you, I'll give them to you later of what the inside apartments look like with no heat. Uh, with no heat? No heat. No heat since the middle of January. Okay. They were waiting for a part. Now they ripped off all, the whole place is ripped up on the inside. The outside looks real nice. Has flowers on, painted on the wall. Uh, four, there was an article in the press that you all should pay attention to about police. And I was wondering if our police get drug tested after reading that report. And five, are the cameras working in the city? I'd like one on 8th and Grand to see what a residential neighborhood really looks like. And then Louise and I were talking. I, I think we should get a percentage for all the calls that we make over the weekend and all the police that have to come and give tickets on these cars. I mean, something's got to be done here. In Bradley Beach, you can't even park an inch in, in the yellow zone. Because that's happened to me going to that bakery. So, have we talked about zoning? Michael, I'm going to let you answer all the questions. I, I've called... So the first one was zoning. Uh, the zoning question? Yes. Uh, the board did it legally. They did it in accordance with the municipal land use law. I believe you talked about this at the last meeting. Uh, the notification is only required upon the first action, and um, they did it legally. It's governed by the municipal land use law. We have no say in the notification department. It's governed by state law. And, and you're referring to the once every, at least once every 10 years, municipalities have a determination <coughs> process yeah. regarding their matters. Yeah. And part of that has to do with the zoning. Well, it's the been. Process I know, but it's been 20 years since that's been reviewed. <coughs> There's a new house around the corner from me. It's five and a half feet from my property line. That's got to be changed. I mean, they put a swimming pool right in my backyard, almost. Five and a half feet? That's ridiculous. Go look at it. It's a huge house. They, the, some of the zoning, the, they have to amend some of the zoning rules. You can't have a big house like that in a little space. The second question was all the vehicles. Well, I mean, no, that's that's really a serious <coughs> question. But the issue coming out of that process uh, at the conclusion of the reexamination, there are recommendations made for potential ordinance revisions to the planning council. So that's something that we have to look at. I'm not familiar with specific properties that may have been addressed through that process, but overall, there are uh, recommendations that come out of the process that come to the planning council for their consideration. Uh, the illegal parking on 8th, I'll email the police chief to make sure he checks that. 1706 Grand Ave, no heat. Uh, that's the first I'm personally hearing about it. I don't know if code has been aware of it, but I'll bring it to their attention. Um, the police and drug testing. Yes, the police are drug testing. There's a random sample um, every quarter, I believe, that they, they undergo a drug test. 
Um, and cameras go where we can afford them. They're not cheap. But we'll look to put one at the area that you refer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's apartment D2. Do you want the apartment number? Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Louise Murray, 1604 Grand Avenue. And to reiterate what Rita said regarding the yellow zones on the streets, I think these people think it's just to make the town look pretty because you've got to go there before 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm here to tell you, if you gave me a pad, I'd make a lot of money for you. The other morning, I had to call someone because he was blocking my driveway, and he was in the yellow zone besides, and he came from 3rd Avenue. And the policeman says, I never saw a car park like this before. I said, he must have had a rough night. On 7th Avenue, where you have that whole strip, which is yellow zone, when I'm off to Mass, you could see the cars parked right there. I, I don't get it. Across the street from the ties, that's, that's another issue. And I'm saying to myself, don't they have any regard for what is and what isn't? I mean, I, I just don't understand. In front of her house, there was like three of them. I mean, like, I, like she said, in, in, in our neighboring town, you can't be an inch into their yellow zone, and they're there with a ticket and lickety-split. I just need something else uh, cleared up for me because I was having a little discussion. And uh, regarding the ordinance for the handicap on what is 400 Dilley Drive, whatever. That is just, that's not designated for any one particular person. There's two parking. You've just added one more parking space. And anybody and everybody can go there. Got it. And one more thing. Are you going to have an ordinance for permits when, when you start putting parking spaces in front of you know, when you start expanding the parking spaces down closer to Grand Avenue, wherever it may be, are, are they going to start getting permits for parking? Like, I don't know how that works, but I'm thinking to myself, if somebody owns a house and has tenants in it, do the parking spaces, I mean, do the parking permits go to the tenants? Or I think they should go to the owner of the house because I think it would cut down on tenants selling those tickets because you, they can park anywhere if they've got that permit. They can go downtown, I'm told, and park there as long as they have the permit. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I getting bad information? A combination of the above. Uh, if, if you get a parking permit for Section Section 1, you cannot use it in the section two, three, or four. It's limited to the section you're getting it for, for the parking permits. Uh, Manzella left? Yeah. Oh, okay. I wish Manzella was still here. He could answer it better. Uh, you can't use it everywhere. Right. As far as the parking permits, no. You can't use it everywhere. They're limited, uh, same as employees are limited, same as residents are limited, same as everybody. The permits are limited. You still to certain have to, areas. You still have to look for a space. So if you pull up and you have a parking permit and there's no spaces, you have to still. It's still a hunting pass, correct. But why can't the owner of a building, if he has, say, three, three apartments, why can't he be issued a permit also? He. He can. He has to apply. But he has to live in Asbury. Supposedly. Correct. Correct. Well, I think that's a little. Well, then. How, how can you, I mean, if the man pays taxes for 45 years, and he happens to live in the next town over the water or over the bridge or whatever. Now, why does he need a parking pass if he doesn't live in town? In case he has to go there to take care of the house or something of that along those lines. Not making it more sympathetic to me. I'm sorry, because if you, because you know what, if you, if you, if you don't have something and the police come over, they'll give you a ticket for, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're parking on Eighth by Rita's. <laughs> the yellow zone. Uh, there's a parking committee meeting the first Wednesday in March at 5:30. Okay. All right, I'm just curious. About and that. Uh, what's Manzella's? Five seven five eight. Uh, um, you can call Mike Manzella tomorrow. 
and he can explain it better. Okay. And then if you have any follow-up questions, you don't even have to attend the meeting. Just give us the question ahead of time. We'll discuss it at the park committee meeting and okay. get back to you. All right. No, because they said there's a problem with people selling them off or, or something. I don't know. Oh, well, that's, that's against the law also. So I, don't, I mean, I heard, um, this is stuff I'm hearing. I, listen, I don't have to be bothered with it, thanks be to God. But I'm just, stuff I'm hearing. You know what I mean? Okay, thank no, you. No, people have tried to Open. duplicate them. People have tried to, like, make copies. But so. what for when you say it, only, it can only, they can only part in that one area? Because it's a big area. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good evening. Uh, Doris Lynn. I'm not an Asbury Park resident. Uh, I live at 26 Winchester Drive in Freehold Township. I'm here tonight as a volunteer with Jersey Shore Food Not Bombs. Um, and first, I have to thank uh, Mr. Capabianco for uh, corresponding with me over email uh, regarding our issue. And also, I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Moore and Councilmember Clayton for speaking with me over the weekend, and uh, Deputy Mayor Quinn for emailing with me about this issue. Um, Jersey Shore Food Not Bombs is a four-year-old organization. Uh, Food Not Bombs is an international organization with chapters all over the world, and our chapter has been in existence for almost four years. It'll be four years in March. We serve a free hot meal every Sunday in front of the train station. Uh, usually we're out on the sidewalk at the corner here of Cookman and Main. And uh, I have to thank uh, the city of Asbury Park as well as the Asbury Park Police Department uh, for being very accommodating and very welcoming for us. <laughs> uh, we, during the summer months, we collect donated food from the vendors at the Red Bank Farmers Market and then we bring it to Asbury Park where we share it all for free uh, in addition to the hot meal and in addition to donated clothing and books and toiletries. Also, when the weather is extremely bad, we will serve the meal inside the train station. Uh, we've been doing this for four years and it ends up being only three or four times a year that we are inside the train station. Um, we try to be mindful of the time and get out of there by four o'clock uh, but unfortunately, um, the last two times in January when it was very cold, uh, we were still in there at 4 o'clock when the city employee came to lock up. And I believe that that's what uh, precipitated uh, the issue today. Um, the city employee informed us that we would need permission from the city manager in order to continue serving food inside the train station. And so, uh, and he stated that we would need insurance, which our organization cannot afford. We're a very small group with a shoestring budget. So uh, he, he said that the city council would still you know, consider our request. So I'm hoping, imploring uh, the council to please um, grant our request to serve food inside the train station. We only do, do it when the weather is extreme, if there's a, a blizzard or if there's snow on the ground or if it's extremely cold out. Uh, then we'll do it inside the train station. And in the future, we will definitely be more careful about being out of there by 4 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Are you done? Yes. Okay. Uh, Michael and Fred, we, we had a discussion closed exec about this. So, Fred, do you want to explain? Uh, yes, I'm the city attorney. And um, tonight was the first opportunity Council had an opportunity collectively to address this um, and brought me into the group as well as Michael about uh, the situation. There are a number of issues that the city is looking into relating to this very worthwhile cause and the activities that you're undertaking. But nevertheless, there are uh, insurance, board of health, and special event issues that the city needs to resolve. Um, so we would recommend that you communicate directly with the city manager uh, and or meet with him uh, so that we can review these issues with you and come up with a, a viable uh, solution to the, issue, the issues that the city has to deal with. Okay. Uh, I okay. So I'll email him and request a meeting. It can be about a week so I can talk to everyone. So. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close. Second. Move You're the second. Okay, we'll move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. Executive session minutes of January 24, 2018.
Workshop minutes of January 24, 2018, and regular session minutes of January 24, 2018. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We have a consent agenda. Resolution 2018-69, resolution approving special event applications. 2018-70, resolution approving appointments of the Public Arts Commission, which appointments are Marilyn Schlossbach to December 31st, 2018 as a regular member, Ellen Gaynor as a regular member, December 31st, 2019, <coughs> Sir Johnny Sagrim as an alternate one member with a term expiring December 31st, 2018, and there's a vacant position for an alternate to December 31st, 2019. Resolution 2018-71, resolution authorizing appointments to the Sunset Lake Commission. The appointments are Chester Bowles, commission member term expiring 231, 2018, and Christopher Avalon as an alternate two member term expiring 1231, 19. Resolution approving entering into the Central Jersey Health Insurance Fund. And resolution 2018-73, resolution to refund overpaid taxes due to 100% disabled veteran exempt for block 2505, lot 4, which is 906-601 Bangs Avenue. Resolution 2018-74, resolution to credit sewer account for block 607, lot 5, 920 Madison Avenue. And resolution 2018-75, resolution to refund overpaid taxes due to duplicate payment for Block 1003, Lot 28, 1508 and a half Bangs Avenue. Would anybody like any of the items removed from these agenda, from the consent agenda? If not, can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We'll move on to individual resolutions. Resolution 2018-76. Resolution amending the temporary budget appropriations for the 2018 budget. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-77. Resolution approving payment of bills. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2018-78, resolution enter entering into the memorandum of understanding for lead services. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Yes. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-79, resolution identifying the menu items as per the subsequent developers agreement between the City of Asbury Park, Madison Asbury Retail LLC, and Asbury Partners. The uh, menu items are the purchase of Boardwalk Street ID signage for $2,000, purchase of beach access mats for $7,000, purchase of handicapped beach chairs for $2,000, purchase of cigarette portals, for 2000 purchase of dual use trash recyclable containers for 42000 uh, lab shack operations for 10000 wi-fi fees for 18000 and materials for beach, lock beach lockers 16000 can I have a motion please move it second any comments or questions council member clayton yes council member kendall yes deputy mayor quinn yes mayor moore yes Resolution 2018-80, Resolution Awarding Boardwalk Replacement Project Contract. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017, I'm sorry, 2018-81, Resolution Approving Amending Contract for LSRP Services for Department of Public Works Garage. Have a motion, please. Move it. <coughs> Have a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-82, resolution authorizing contracting agent for to privately sell surplus property. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? <coughs> 
Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-83, resolution awarding contract, design contract, and administration and inspect services for WWTP. Mm -hmm. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On to introductions. Bond ordinance providing for very, I'm sorry, 2018-7. Bond ordinance providing for various 2018 utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey. Appropriating, I believe this was changed to 375,000. Therefore, authorizing the issuance of 375000 in bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. Have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for March 14, 2018. Ordinance 2018-8, an ordinance approving and adopting redevelopment plan for real property located at 1001 First Avenue in the city of Asbury Park, Monmouth County, New Jersey, block 401, lot 10, 11, 12, and 13. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? I'm sorry, can I ask a question? Okay. Even though it's introduction, just so there's no major change. So this project includes affordable housing, and this project is not asking for any tax abatements or pilots. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 14, 2018. Ordinance 2018-9, ordinance amending and supplementing section 8-6 inspections Subsection 8-6.1, inspection of vehicles, and by amending section 8-23, use of operation of pedicab, subsection 8-23.4, inspections of chapter 7, licensing and regulation of taxi cab liveries and pedicabs of the code of the city of Asbury Park. Have a motion to introduce, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? No. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 14, 2018. Ordinance 2018-2. Ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park authorizing the removal of three on-street parking spaces located in Bangs Avenue and Bond Street in connection with the development of property located at 700 Bangs Avenue, Block 2508, Lot 2. Can I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public, please? Move it. Second. Motion to close. Move it. Move it. Second. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2018-2, please? Move it. Can I have a second? Se second. Thanks. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. <coughs> ordinance 2018-3, an ordinance establishing restricted parking space for use of handicapped persons at property located at 400 Deal Lake Drive in the city of Asbury Park and amending and supplementing section 7-36 entitled Handicapped Parking of Chapter 7 Traffic of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park. Have a motion to open this to the public, please. Move it. Second. I, I read the ordinance. It says 400 Deer Lake Drive. That's all it says. You know how 400 Deer Lake Drive is a big place. Who's this for? It, it, it. Well, it's it's a per it, person, right? You go on to her, huh? You go on to the description of the place. It gives the exact location for a deal lake drive in the city of Asbury Park. X mark, which handicapped parking space shall begin 25 feet south of the southwest corner of Park Avenue, 
and Deal Lake Drive and extended 20 feet on center there from. So it, it describes exactly where it's going to be. I know, <coughs> I know where it's going to be, but you know how many people have handicapped stickers on Deal Lake Drive? Do you want us to make the entire it, street? You have to uh, say if it's for a certain person. No, we don't. No. That's what past well, you do no. on any, everything no. else. No. That's what past councils did. I always thought it was totally illegal. Well, when you when you give out handicap for a house, that's for that person. No, it's not. So but who's it for? It's a handicap spot in front of a person's house, and the next door neighbor happened to have a handicap sticker and got there first. They can park there. I, I was here three weeks ago when you introduced the ordinance, and it was supposed to be for a certain person no, that lived never, at 400 Deer Lake Drive. That hasn't happened since 2013. The last one I remember that, that happened for was Lucy Rizanko. <laughs> I don't know. Well, why put 400 Deer Lake Drive? Because we got to put down an address. <laughs> Motion to close. Move it. Second. <clears throat> Motion to adopt ordinance 2018-3. Move it. A second. Second. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye.